Yo, yo, we back with another one, and another one, another one, man. This is what I think of podcast stories behind the craft. As y'all can see today, we got a group vibe going. We're finna talk some shit, have a good time. You know how we get down. Yeah. Roll to two million, roll to 5,000 subscribers, y'all tap in. So without further ado, who I got today with me? Got Fleetwood J.R. from Orlando, Florida, West Side, Rich Myers, B.A.Z. All right. And you got to play a partner, Sly Life. You know what I'm saying? Rich Myers alumni, Orlando, Florida native. For sure. What brings y'all to the podcast today? What's the word of the day? The word of the day, man. Seize the opportunity, bro. Ah, Got to make it happen. Yeah, that yeah. been like this the last yeah. two days, bro. For yeah. real. Say so getting it in. So what is that like when you in that grind mode for real? Like you really get into the bag, really like locked in. Nothing can't get you out of your bag. Nothing can't get you out of your focus. Nothing like that. Damn, for me, it's like I'm in the avatar state. You know what I'm saying? You, know, you ever seen that uh, animation, uh, The Last Airbender? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Being in the avatar state, focus, you know what I'm saying? Just getting to it, tunnel vision, you know? I feel that. You? Nah, facts, bro. It's like, I don't need, I just be focused, bro. Like, everything on the outside is like, you got a job to do. It's a goal to make, bro. So it's like, how you can get it done, bro, just make it happen, even mm-hmm. if it's, you know, one day might be or whatever and stuff, but at least you did it, you know? Mm-hmm. Just don't go a day without trying to, you know, feed into what you're doing. So what it was like growing up for y'all here, which I was getting into, what school y'all went to? What high school? Oak Ridge, Oak bro. Ridge. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. I ain't too far into the Oak Ridge Pioneer, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna second place. <laughs> so what yeah. it was like growing up for y'all? Like, what was y'all everyday life like? It was way more other than this, man, way before social media, you know what I'm saying? No, <laughs> everybody was really outside, you know. Uh, sure. you know. Yeah, it was more like, bro, just everybody was more like, it was more organic vibes, dog. You know what I mean? Like, go to the Smith Center, playing sports, hanging apart, you know what I mean? Right. Meet different people from different sides of the city, bro. Playing football. Late Lana doing days, bro, playing ball, pick up ball and stuff with the old heads. Like, it was just a different vibe, you know? Like. It was like, what a time to be alive type feeling, you know? That's facts. I, I miss them days where you can go mm-hmm. run outside, play football, play yeah. tackle on yeah, the concrete, yeah, yeah. shoot some hoops, nobody getting mad. You can talk junk to each other, and then y'all dab each other, go to the candy lady after, you know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, for real. Now you can yeah, not, now the candy lady is like rare form now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So y'all was playing any sports like full time or what y'all was doing like throughout y'all journey? I did a little, you know, football, track, I mean. What you ran the track? I did a little, uh, the 400, did a relay. I ain't really stayed too much into it because <laughs> had too much going on in school. <laughs> 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 too much going on. What about you? Yeah, just basketball, bro, overall. <laughs> like, really until I got hurt playing football, bro, and some other stuff. But I was just like, bro, just playing ball just like everybody else. You yeah. know, we start off picking up a ball. The music came in between and stuff like that, too, yeah. you know? So when did y'all know music was a thing for y'all? I, I figured that I was made for music when I was nine years old. Uh, I learned how to write music by my damn self, just listening to the, you know, everything with music. I created my own tape when I was nine. Damn. So, yeah, I, I was made for this shit. So <laughs> that's how I, I feel. That. You? Yeah, so I just say really middle school for me, but like music I always was in the household, you know, from like my mom playing the old school, the R&B, Rick James, all that type of mm-hmm. stuff. Then my brother come with the the East Coast, West Coast, up north, down south, pop, Biggie, Cab, went all that type of stuff. So I would ear hustling for a minute. Mm-hmm. Then I had an older cousin that was, you know, you know, you had Trill going deep well, all that stuff back then. Like right. he was one of the ones that was involved in like the Florida showcases performing. They had a group and stuff like that. So when I heard him rap and he put it on wax and I'm hearing it like he got his demo and stuff like that. So I'm hearing it like, damn, I can do that too. And I ain't but like 12 maybe at the time, 11, you know. Mm-hmm. Then I just started picking up the craft, started working on it myself. Then turned it into something. Definitely. So 
there's always moments in your careers, especially being an artist or being in the entertainment industry period, there's a time where it's like there's doubts. So what was like any doubts that y'all had in y'all mind throughout this process that y'all doing music, even though y'all been doing it for so long? I mean, with anything you do, you don't always have doubts. Doubts in the back of your head, you feel like you can't do it. You feel like, you know, the outside somebody better than you. It's like, it's just voices, man. You got to just overcome that type of stuff. It's part of the journey. You know, it's all, it's all a part of the journey. So, you know, when you do overcome it, you get to talk about it and say how you persevere through things. So, Definitely. You, know. you? Shit, I feel like, bro, it was for me, it was like I had an opportunity to demo shot. It was like a red and blue pill, though. They like 2012 around when Cheeky dropped and all that was going on. So mm. I kind of almost kicked the door in, bro. Like I said, a bar, I was like, I could see the millions on the other oh, side man. of the door. <laughs> but the support was crazy. Like the business went bad with the money, but the job was getting done, though. You know what I mean? It was like, at least I got the hit of feedback at the time, you know what I'm saying? Like from the labels and what they thought and stuff like that. Because demo shopping, It'll, you know, ain't nobody really experienced it back then for the new era. Back then, you had to put together a kit. You have an agent go shop your demo with the labels, get a whole contract, talk about percentages, what they're going to do for you. It don't guarantee a label, you know, is going to sign you or whatever, but at least you get the feedback and critique from that. So it was like, I really kind of got motivated after a while, just hearing what the label said, two labels, you know, what they feedback was about me, like Atlantic and Del Jam. Mm -hmm. But it was just like, damn, I was so close, but I needed that more support, you feel me, to get this mm -hmm. dough with it. But you know, in the beginning of anything you do, not a lot of people gonna be a supporter until you really pop like that. Yeah. So to piggyback off that, now in this day and age, you don't really need a label to push you and do so, the things you need yeah. to do. So how does that make you feel in a way that you now got basically your own creative control and whatever you want to do and you could just basically blow up overnight it's a good feeling bro you know what i mean like, wonderful feeling <laughs> yeah because it's like you know you're in a time now where like you go you can go to the labels with leverage social media open it up where you can touch people all over back when we was doing it you know in the early days you didn't have as many resources as you do now mm -hmm. everybody got a studio at the crib whatever the how you can, like I say, you literally can go viral overnight with it, you know? And the good thing is, you know, when you network and meet people as an independent artist, you can find ways to get plaques, you know, from the radio, from your music, you know, just get your achievements like that too. And um, like I say, it's an open circuit, you know, depending on where you want to pop at, but you need to be where it's popping at too, you know? And in performances, mm -hmm. you get your face out there. But your network, your network, really, when it comes down to that. Facts. Mm -hmm. Facts. All facts. I feel like, you know, especially me going out last night and kind of using my resources to help other people get where they need to be or rub elbows with certain people mm -hmm. just because of who I am and what I've done. You know what I'm wow. saying? So that's why I always be like, make sure I keep good standards with everybody, try to do my best to support everybody. So there's a question for both of y'all. Do y'all ever feel like the pressure of I got to make it tomorrow or the pressure of society um, that it brings? Because I be feeling pressure sometimes what I'm doing. I'm like, damn, I see this person blowing up or this team of podcasters signed a $100,000 deal and they're getting sponsors. I ain't got no sponsors, things like that. So do y'all ever feel like the anxiety or the pressure to make it in a certain place with the music? question i mean it's competition and everything so with, with competition comes pressure so i i think it's needed you know what i mean but at the same time it's like i won't let it knock me i mean that's what i can say about it yeah. <laughs> i mean I, don't, I ain't gonna lie bro the more you understand what you're doing in your craft the deeper you get into it the time you put in and you notice like you can't really count everybody else's wins because you got to kind of yeah. pay attention to your wins because it's your timeline, it's your story, right. your network. Like I say, I said the other day, I said your relationship that you build with somebody, that's your relationship between you and them. Mm -hmm. That's that's the difference between somebody else's relationship with them versus you. So like you say, you keep your face card good with people and you do what you do. You might not have the same experiences to be like, oh, they be on this type of time and I, but that ain't your experience. You know what I'm saying? So. 
like you say, the kids really, like I say, keep your face card good. And like I say, just keep going along your journey. Like, you can look at others for motivation to see what they did to turn yes. into your own situation. Yeah. But like, don't let don't feel too pressured about yeah. it because we all got a time in the pot. It's yeah. a time for everything. Everybody like that one song, journey. that one day you might not feel like doing something <laughs> like hitting the lottery. You might not feel like doing it. That's the day that it could have did something, you know? Right. You just got to keep in mind, like, consistency is the cheat but code, bro. Isn't there, like, a devil's advocate, like, that angel and a devil on your shoulder? Yeah. yeah. And then it's, like, get them late nights. you like, yeah. damn, is this really worth it? Mm. Do I really want to do this? Yeah. You put that pressure on yourself because it's, like, the time. You feel like, in your mind, you expect yourself to be somewhere at a certain time. So it's, like, if I'm not there yet and I see my peers getting mm. there, it's, like, how the hell? You start questioning, I get that. You know what I mean? Everybody got their own journeys, though. Yeah. I feel, experience, you know? I feel experiences, though, a, a kind of shape that yeah. how you feel. Because if you if you are artist or something and you got experience to know, like, damn, I was in this type of room that everybody don't get in, you know, necessarily. Like, for instance, when I got to Atlanta in 2015, like I say, through my cousin, through all the work he did in the industry and stuff like that, that opened the door from his resources to be like, we going to TI Studios. Right. You gotta hit a keypad about three times. And you gotta walk past the security dude just to get access in there. You know, you gotta know somebody to know somebody to be in these situations. So it's like, you know, you get the kind of network with them people and stuff, and they respect you because you in this room. Like, same as when you start popping more with the podcast, you're gonna start getting in room. People ain't gonna know you from a can of paint, but they gonna know that you in this room for a reason. Mm -hmm. So you got value, you know what I mean? Like you build your worth over time. In the beginning, it's gonna feel like that too. He like, damn. Either you're gonna be like, I want this to happen overnight. You're gonna be like, damn, I understand. I gotta get out of my craft. I gotta learn this. I gotta learn basically to build my route where I wanna go. You know, it's either which way you wanna go at that bit, either keep throwing some shit at the wall, you feel me? And that bit on stick, you know, you think it's gonna stick every time you throw it. Or, Come up with a plan to make it stick. You know what I mean? To make it pop. You got to be in control of your, your oh, destiny. destiny bro. You know what I mean? Some, like you say, it's human to feel. Because we felt that in the beginning. I felt that in the beginning. Making bro. music. I'm like, there ain't nobody. This shit ain't hitting like that. But yeah. then it got to a point where like, my skill got up. Now I'm feeling myself. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, okay. It's, it, it was shaky at first. Now it's starting to get a little bit. Then now, you know, all the different situations I've been in. The support. Like it just built. It build up more, you know what I mean? It gets you stronger like you're working out, bro. For real. I feel that. Get the reps in. So, I feel like when it comes to being a musical artist, y'all got to go through a lot of obstacles when it yeah. comes to performances, <laughs> music videos, dealing with, you got to go through this person to know this person. You got to tap in with these different people yeah. to get where you want to be. So, what makes y'all get up every day and want to deal with those obstacles per se to get to the next level say we found another lane to do it you feel yeah. me the hundred dollars podcast yeah. you know what i mean that right. opened a lot of lanes. it opened up more conversations <laughs> because we dealing with people that do different things yeah so it's like all right for instance uh shot the temple mystic you know in atlanta right now she from from temple she i just went up there with some music to you know what I mean? They end up pitching the podcast and everything kind of correlated. You know, it's like, it ain't like I'm talking about doing music and I go up there talking about cooking. Right. It don't go together. Don't go together. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't talk about nothing. It don't, it don't mesh together. Yeah. If you're going to be a multi-talented person or whatever, a talent stack, make sure they all go together so it blend together and make a perfect mix, you know? So whatever you do is where you go. It feed off each other, you know? We meet new people. We meet people. It's open the conversation because... We open, hey, get your story, do our, how, how we do it. Then we find that they doing something, you know, we like, okay, let's link on this. You know, we, we met up with an R&B artist, got two records, dope artist. She sound like Mariah Carey, oh real spill. But you. it came from she the- sound like Mariah Carey, bro. I swear. Hey, bro, bro, just just I wait swear. on it, bro. Just yeah. wait on it, dog. I promise. It. And it came from an episode of giving flowers and let her plant her seeds. And I'm like, okay, I'll do music, you know? Like, we got to take going yeah. and- it just, that's, that shit just gonna keep going, bro. Like, that's the only way we kind of keep kind of, how can I say, adding on to what's going on. Cause when you start a podcast, how we how we start a conversation, bro? Like, if we just talking about music, 
You know, you gotta kinda yeah, open that deal up a little more. You yeah. don't know who know who, bro. Yeah. So what is like the most interesting thing about the podcast other than it opening door for you guys? Um, we let people come on and talk about themselves and about their accomplishments and their trials and tribulations and we give them flowers. And we let them speak about their journey so the listener who's watching or listening, they get it be like, I like that. I wanna get into what they doing. Thank you for telling me how you did that. You know what I mean? Because there's so many things that people want to get into, don't know how to get into. Yeah. Bring people on the show, different walks of life, different career paths, and they tell their tell the whole journey, the whole story. So that's the cool thing about our show. The one thing I like, because I've been a part of the show, um, the questions. Y'all let me prepare. Normally, I'm always prepared. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm yeah. always prepared. Yeah. <laughs> but just to outline of okay he's gonna ask me this and mm -hmm. i still kind of went off a little bit from yeah. what i wanted to say mm -hmm. but it just felt good for me to actually actually explain everything that i've accomplished throughout my process because it's been times where people interview me because they see what i do they like yeah. what i do they respect what i do and i appreciate all the opportunities that i've been given but just for me to be able to express every aspect of this yeah. journey that I've been on, yeah. it felt good. Yeah. Even though my mom was watching and she was like, why are you so long winning? I was like, because I was, I was feeling good. The yeah. questions, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I was feeling like amazed because yeah. it made me feel, because like we were saying in the beginning of this podcast, mm -hmm. sometimes it's like you get in that dark room, the room get cold, you laying in the bed, it's like, is this really something you want to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's this, say that. You know, you know what I'm saying? That, bro. So it's like when people yeah. actually go back and tune in to what you got going on and really respect what you have to say, mm -hmm. it it makes me happy because it's like all right, all them long nights, early mornings, long editing. Yes, bro, it's worth the, it. That's the Black Mama story, right yeah, there, dog. Man. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Like that's it. Because when you hear Kobe's story, it's like he was at it, you know what I mean? And you see the hardships along the way, yeah. you know? So when they talk about Kobe having the black, the college mama mentality is like literally, like work hard, you know? Uh, but yeah, brother, like that's really, that's really the format with that though, man. Like yeah. you gotta have patience, one. You gotta be present to have patience, bro. Facts, I'm yeah. learning that right Cause, now. Cause <laughs> uh, like in the beginning, the format ain't start like that, bro. It nah. wasn't as detailed, bro. We was on there just Freestyle. going with it and freestyle a bit, you know, write a little bit here and there. But as it kept progressing and stuff like that and more people start, you know, tapping in and stuff, you know, cause like I say, it's like, it's like a non-profit in some way too. But even though, like I say, the money ain't come yet, money coming, bro. And anything you do when yeah. you start off the wedding, you you know it going you know you had it. You want the money. The money gonna come though. Yeah, but I like in the want the money. Yeah, <laughs> now nah, real talk, bro, is at a point of time, bro, the price is going up. And the yeah. ones that could have tapped in with your came and holler at you when you was doing it like that, they hey the price, the price does not. My price is my price. You can't negotiate with retail, bro. Nope. Can't go in the store and say, give me this or discount, or something like that. Paying for a price, dog. So that's one thing I want to say too, bro, when it comes to supporting our own people. But uh, yeah, man. It be hard though to support your own people. The reason why I say that is because they don't be as professional as they should be, mm -hmm. or they expect you to be a certain way just because you my dog. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why it be hard to support our own people because and you never know how they're going to come by. And like, I'm all about professionalism. Yeah. I took marketing classes. I took customer service classes. So that's what I'm looking for, customer mm -hmm. service. Even though, you know, I know you, I still want you to come correct because if you come at me sideways, you might come at the next person you don't even know sideways. Mm -hmm. That's why I kind of treat everybody the same no matter what I'm doing because right. I always want people to be like, have a certain, you know, way that I treat people, you know what I'm saying? If yeah. that makes sense. People gotta respect the business too, too bro. Got to. When you come in <laughs> into your dojo outside, like you could have left them, you ain't gotta bring them here. You know, it's the fact of, you know, dang, bro, they taking a chance on me or something, you know? So I gotta come in and get my A game, you know? For real. Like, don't just half-ass it, you know? Cause when they going to go do, get a job or get that sack or get whatever they doing, they try to get their best effort for it. So don't short me with it. it. Don't short me cause you know me and all that stuff. So I ain't gotta go hard with that. I already know, bro. And like, nah, mm -hmm. like, like you say, it's legit what I'm doing, I wanna do, you know? So you gotta come do it if you gonna do it right. So I got a I got another question for y'all because lately I be feeling like, you know, artists are being targeted 
no matter where we go, not just in Orlando, yeah. more so everywhere, Atlanta, Cali, Texas, anywhere we go in the state, artists are being targeted, going to jail mm -hmm. for long periods of time. So how do y'all feel about artists being targeted by not just police, by their peers around yeah, them? By, yeah. Heck yeah. So how y'all feel about that situation or that, you know? Being in, 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 in it, look, well, just being a hip hop artist is dangerous itself. It's one of the most dangerous really occupations tough. out here nowadays. <laughs> so you know you gotta always watch your back no matter what. You know from young kind, goddamn everybody. So I feel like even yeah. outside of hip hop and in hip hop itself, like the yeah. same rules apply. You know we come from where we come from and they where we be in. It's like it's the stigma of you know the black culture and how we respond with each other and stuff like that. So it's like not necessarily getting too comfortable, you know, in the situation. Like you got to go, we got to go through life, unfortunately, on guard for our everything possible, for bro. Real. You know, it's just the, the coin that we would flip, bro. Like, so you say when it comes to police, our peers, like, yo, you know, it ain't all like that with everybody, but you just got to understand, bro. Like as an artist too and all that type of stuff, like everybody don't want to see you win, bro. And it's crazy. Like, it's just the honest truth. I hate hearing whole, that, bro. Whole bunch of envies and jealousy shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Like in a perfect, we was in a perfect world. Like, bro, you know, yo, like I, you know, I want to see you win and boom, boom, but it, like people just got some people got sick of the generals, dog, and it just be crazy. So how how does that like? The are y'all able to sleep at night? I am. I sleep good like a baby. I don't yeah, that. nah, you can't, yo, you can't, you know, we done deal with it for so long. It's <laughs> right. like, bro, it's just like, you just get up and, and do what you do every day, bro. Like, keep pushing. Yeah, I don't like to live my Cause life. Because that, bro, that's paranoid, yeah. bro. You just be living like that every day. Yeah. You be scared to go outside. Yeah, Bubble yeah. boy type so, shit. So, question. Because I watched the, a whole interview. Stayed up, watched the whole interview. Mm -hmm. Young and Ace lives his life like that. Yeah. Or, I don't know if you watched it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I seen it. I seen so it. you see how he said yeah. every day he can't sleep. He don't like driving in cars with people. Yeah. Things of that nature. So it's people out there that's like that. Yeah. He's probably not the only one that's like yeah. on guard at all times. Yeah. PTSD real, bro. Like so stuff much. that happened. Like when his situation, I, his brother, he lost all them people. Like I think that kind of triggered it. And plus his environment too. Yeah. So it's like, but it seemed like when he say that, he don't want people to rock because of all of everything that's going on. You know, he, he targeted pretty much. Exactly. You got people that hating him from his city. He police. can't really go back to his city. Police. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, it's just, he just, it's, it feel like, I feel like he just accepted the reality of what's his reality right now, what's going on with him. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody reality different. You know, you guys, people walk around like, it don't even bother me. Kill free. No, it's in the uh. Don't even yep. look back. Running and walking the dog. They ain't even no words in the world, bro. Right. So, right. They they safe. Yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> so, we had the tail end of the year. This the this is like fourth quarter for everybody. Pretty much. This is when everybody's running like a chicken with their head cut off because they're trying to figure out their life when they had six months, seven months to figure Such out a, shit. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> what y'all got in store for the second? We getting some music videos. Damn right, new man. Music. Bro, yeah. we just worked on a project that literally is damn near done, bro. To be honest, we went overboard on that shit. With two days, bro. The second day in Orlando, we planned this out, dog. And we literally made it happen. Eight hours in the studio? Yeah, eight hours. Yeah. Bro. Records, bro. Like, all them type of vibes. And I always say this all the time, bro. Yeah. Like, uh, on my end, like, I got away with words, bro. I'm a slick talker, bro. Like, I can say what I want to say without saying it. And if you catch it, you know what I'm saying. Like, I ain't got to promote no violence necessary either, but I promote yeah. self-defense all day. Like, oh, I'm always say protect yourself. Yeah. But senseless and all that type of stuff, I don't come from the era of music like that. So it's like, I can say so much, bro, and still make the song sound good. Yeah. And you? Same, bro. <laughs> Piggyback back on what he talking about. Insane. I feel that. Because I ain't going to lie. It, they said drill was dying, but I feel like every time Man. they say drill is dying, it just 
magically appears Bruh, back. The young nigga putting Drew switches on the old die. classics now, nah, boy. You yeah, drill ain't gonna never die, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> that drill wave has been like over a decade now. Nah, when Cheeky came out, bro, and that shit spread a lot like wildfire. But Cheeky like, was different though, bro, because yeah. he was living that life every day. If yeah. you look at his first ten videos, he's in the hood with his yeah. with his gang and right, shit. Right, like right, he right. was really living that life for us. Some of these mm. just, they ain't really living like that. No, nope. it just yeah, it just look good. It's the influence, bro. Yeah, really, too. it's more like I can't have a mind of my own, dog. So, and I want to be a rapper nowadays. It used to be pick up the ball and you know the stuff like that. Hoop dream. Now I turn into it's where the people, you know, they they see the influence of social media and it's very impactful, bro. So yeah, everybody yeah, likes shit. Let it rock. They ain't got no song where he can rap other than spinning, drilling, and doing the stuff to their own people, bro. I used to listen to a lot of pop growing up, so I'm heavy on the like what he stood for and stuff like that. So it's like, damn, I don't really. It gets to the point where it's like, you know, it get time, bro. Like you don't really want to do that to your own people, bro. For real, for real. Cause like we got so much other stuff going on, but it's against us. So it's like, damn, if we can got down. Just figure that that part out, bro. We can actually save a generation than what's going on right now. Facts. Really? Trying so, to drop that good energy on there. I wanna play, I wanna play a game with y'all. Yeah. Y'all ready? Ready for it. So dog. it's would you rather So we we saving people. <laughs> and this question from the last podcast I did. So who would you rather save? Michael Jackson or Prince? <laughs> Michael. I'm like my yeah. I'm like Michael. Why? Bro, Mike was an icon, bro. But I ain't I ain't nothing against Prince, cause Prince was toe to toe with him too, dog. But Mike just hit different, bro. Like the music and it, and yeah, it hit different. That's but really Prince, a tough question too. Prince up the two though, nah. He he was smart, yeah. bro. But I'm still rolling with Michael, my end, dog. You yeah. say Michael too? It's 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 a tough question. It really is. I I love both of them, but Purple I say Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, just because it's what he stood for. He's an icon. Both are yeah. icon, but it's what, what he, he said about uh, the Jews and stuff in that one yeah, song yeah, and yeah. how the system was kind of going. And he man, was exposing a little how, bit. Yeah. How he came to like a, a music industry, like he was letting people know how dirty the music industry was. He was able to take Sony Music and, you know, own it, you all type of stuff. He was right. doing it, you know what I mean? So I respect Michael Jackson. Benny Wild, it was yeah. business and then the music and then the influence. Benny yeah, music and influence, bro. He definitely had an influence. Yeah. I always tell people, I'm never gonna forget when I was a kid and he passed away. They showed the little highlights of like his like biggest moments, mm -hmm. and you know the first moment everybody sees is that Super Bowl. Super Bowl, yeah, all day. And he did, he was just standing there for like ten minutes, right? He bro. wasn't even talking. Call he was the just ambulance. standing there, yeah, bro. and them people are passing out. Yeah, that's the aura he had, with, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. like I wish I could have seen something like that. Yeah, you know Real what I'm saying? Because that's that's insane. Mm -hmm. Like they're screaming your name, you just still, and then like the ambulance coming, you still standing still there. Standing there. That shit just crazy. Then the show was a phenomenal too. Like, exactly. Man. So, <laughs> Biggie or Tupac? Pop. Pop. I ain't saving I ain't Biggie. Gonna, man, why I you why you said it like that? that? Nothing against, <laughs> nothing against Biggie. <laughs> fans, right. Man, it just hit different. Like, yeah, man, it hit different because Biggie, Biggie was definitely an MC. I put that on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You can't really compel Pac and Biggie though, man, because Pop was a revolutionary. Two Biggie was. A real rapper, bro. I put that on that. Like I ain't gonna was, lie. I love Park. Park is my favorite. Park is on my wall, but yeah, it's just I don't know. Biggie had Biggie had a hold on me too, especially like he can the way he rap. Yeah, he can paint a picture. Picture, mm -hmm. vivid. Yes, just like everybody always say. I always go to the song, mm -hmm. but R P X. Suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though you're not in a suicidal thought moment, you, you can go to that song and he can put you in that moment how he was feeling. Yeah. And it's like, damn, like, okay, now you open my eyes to a lot of different things. Yeah. So that's what I'm like. But I feel like Big ain't have a. a I think it's yeah, no, not even that, but I think his project why like he didn't get to get in his bag all the way like how Pop did yeah, releasing yeah. music. Like the work ethic was different. Like I feel like it. Was, that didn't happen with Biggie. I think Biggie would have had way more music, but the music still timeless though. Like you can't replace that. 
But I feel like the the catalog and stuff ain't as really long like that. But the impact still, even though it's not as long, he still got yeah. that impact I love on Pop, people. I love Pop Worth Ethic. You know what I mean? He, he hit the studio like a road runner. So I love it. Yeah, that's unmatched. Like he 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 got out of fucking prison. Prison and just went crazy. Yeah. He was the hottest rapper in, the, in eight months. He was the number one artist in the hip hop world. Feel me? Now you got the government and all them people involved. They trying to stop what's going on. It was different. Yeah, man. So, if you could be in any TV show or movie, what would it be? Damn. <laughs> man, TV that show or different. movie? A movie. Just one? Damn, that's a loaded question. Yeah, it is. He, hey, he know how I'm coming. He seen you. Yeah. Yeah, he, he gonna make you think. TV show, movie. Yeah, a TV yeah. show and a movie, or a TV show or a movie. Y'all can do both. All right, uh, if it was a movie, I would want to be the winner. Lottery ticket. I would want to be the winner in the movie Lottery <laughs> Ticket. That's the movie I do. <laughs> <laughs> show. Show. Oh man, uh, that movie was crazy. That bro. movie was crazy. <laughs> um, damn, I don't know, man. Show I'm gonna say house party, bro. House party Put cool. me in yeah. that bit. Yeah. Which one? The uh, Put me in house party one. Yeah, one was original. Classic. Original. Yeah, 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 I don't want to go all the way to three years. Just got away from yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Let Brandon be my uncle in that bit. <laughs> yeah, we gonna. Yeah, yeah. TV He's just show. Vibe. TV show. God damn. And I was here watching that bit too recently, bro. It's tough. TV show. I ain't messing with Snowfire, bro. Cause cap. that shit was dirty. What, what you mean? Is that's yeah. life? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. It is. I didn't understand it at first. Yeah, but now I understand. Like if you don't, because at the business, end he ain't even. Yeah, he walked away with nothing in the end. Like everything fell up, fell. Like yeah. Nah, put me on, put me on the reality TV show, man. I want to start my own for the love of Sly. Oh, you yeah. want that flavor flay type? I ain't thing, gonna bro. lie, those yeah. shows was real deal. Yeah. Classic yeah. I'm shows, telling you, bro. Like, give me yeah. my own little show, man. You you want girls fighting over you? Feel me right down here in the city, man. Blow the city up. Whole dialogue, man. We gonna start it for the love of so life. like, yeah. What type of girls you like then? Like, what type of girls would be your steal for real? I like women, women. What you mean, women, women? I ain't talking about the ones that act like masculine part time. I'm talking feminine. about feminine all the way full time. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I like women. So you don't, you don't want a woman to take charge. She ain't gonna take. I'm. I'm. She ain't gonna take. She ain't gonna want to take charge. <laughs> really? Yeah. She don't want no woman with a backbone. Yeah, nah, women don't have to. She just sit back and be pretty, man. So you don't want her to speak up for herself? No, she good. I mean, that don't mean you don't speak up for yourself. You ain't got no backbone. She feminine. You know what I'm saying? But they pose it a lot of stuff to like if they feel like you doing something to them that's wrong, they allow to speak up for themselves. Of course, that's with anybody, but I'm saying, as far as overall, I just want a woman woman. Hmm. Traditional. Just like a woman want a masculine man, I'm gonna that. Give me a woman. So, so what for the love of Sly, ladies. I'm gonna go ahead and get these auditions <laughs> on. <laughs> Scared up. <laughs> you smart, man. I try to walk you into something, but yeah, you, yeah. you smart, <laughs> man. Nah, put me on Breaking Bad, though, bro. That was a good yeah. little series. Yeah, oh, good. I heard that's a great show. That's yeah. a great series. You gonna get locked in on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was straight. What would you play in it though? Man, let me be the let me be the assistant to the cook, man. Tight yeah, stuff. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> let him do the work, bro. You gotta just see yeah, it, dog. It's yeah. a good little yeah. yeah. That was getting you to it. Jesse, yeah, you yeah, they was getting to it. They was getting to yeah. it, bro. Real talk, low key. Yeah, definitely. So, if you was writing your own book, what would the name of the book be? Mm. Hmm. That's good. Uh, got, I was um, writing a book. What would be the name of the book? You got the TV show down pat. Now you write your own biography. My book will be named The Guide to How to Get Back to Self. The Guide to How to Get Back to mm -hmm. Self. Great title. <laughs> Yeah, hold on, bro. I'm still thinking, bro. Yeah, my mind be running like that. I don't be freestyling a lot with that. That's something that's like, damn, if I really do that, bro, I got to sit down and really, like, put it together. Because I want that title to be hidden. Like, yeah, yeah I know I've been through a way, like, 10 papers trying to name that bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, this ain't hidden. This ain't yeah, it, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. I got to be forcing myself with it. 
Like, because if it's the title was everything, bro, that's the first thing somebody hear. You wanted to catch their ears so they can be like, okay, what that is? Let me check it out. You know what I mean? They ain't going to look through the cover art and the pictures and everything. Like, mm. Yeah, that title of everything. I feel that. So, if you had your own biography, who would play you? Actor? Actor. Actor-wise. Oh, man. Hmm. I don't know. That's tough. Yeah, yeah, I, ain't right about, I ain't worried about an actor like doing a good job because there's a lot of them that can do a good job. But as far mm-hmm. as like like looking like me, like I don't know. I got a win. I got a win in mind too, bro. I'm trying to yeah, think of which show that bit was. But uh, uh, let me get let me get butt off that play uh Bobby Brown, bro, in a movie in a new edition, dog. Oh, you he ain't gotta about be. He um, what's his name? He played Kane in Power too. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he nice. He ain't even gotta like you know how some movie you see, bro. I'm like, damn, they only like Mike Tyson on Hulu. They was yeah. like, they don't even look like Tyson, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I did a little bit though. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. yeah, a little, a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. It was a good series, though. Okay, was, see, that was saying. That's all that matters. It like, was. this is all that matters, bro. Real talk. I like, know, long as it's good acting behind it, bro, you ain't going to be spot on everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to find, like, <laughs> like people that look exactly like yeah, person. Yeah, Just like with Bob Marley, the Bob Marley movie. They was like, mm-hmm. oh, he don't look like him. I'm like, bro, he did an amazing <laughs> and, job. And that's yeah. his kin, though? Like, he was a kin of Bob, wasn't he? I don't know. That's I a good question. I got to look into that. Yeah. I got to look into that. Mm-hmm. They What's coming with a, they coming out with a new Michael Jackson autobiography? Oh, yeah, man. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Even though they made thousands of them, but yeah, for yeah. real. I'm always interested to see what they Gotta add be. on to it. Yeah, yeah. Some there's a lot of stuff that they left fought, bro. It's yeah. That we don't even know about. I'm I don't sure. think they want to let us know everything. Yeah. They ain't gonna let us know everything. Yeah, cause he had a lot going on. Lot cause they say sometimes, like when I'd be reading into it or like when I used to read the magazines mm-hmm. and the books mm-hmm. that he had a lot of stuff that he was finna come out with that they didn't want people to know. So I always wonder like what he had up under his sleeve that yeah. I he, wouldn't be surprised he would try to cut them out and just go with his own thing, his own production and label. And, yeah, know. cause I think it's Neo. Neo has all like his newer like songs that he had before he passed. That's hard. Damn. And like Neil's like, he'll never let nobody hit him yeah, That's hard. <laughs> because it's like him and Michael was in a studio together, like yeah. working on it. And they was coming out with a, a full length project that was gonna be fully solely under his name. It wasn't he wouldn't have to pay nobody to drop it. Damn. It was, yeah, solely he was working on that. Cause, yeah. Cause Mike was that type of artist, man. I don't know if you know that the SWV song on they sample them. He ain't even charging for it. Oh yeah, really. the um Love's mm, gone, yeah. yeah. He ain't even charged for it. He just gave him a sample. That's crazy. Because he owned all his music. So That's it. And just like Prince, when they say he owned all his, and mm-hmm. yeah. That'd be crazy to like, because I see like the breakdown of what a label gives you and what they want back. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of, that's a lot of equity. They want too much, bro. Right. <laughs> that why if you if you any artist out there, independent artist, man, make sure that contract you read it in full because they gonna own your likeness just like the NBA own the likeness of yeah. athletes is just stipulations to yeah. it. Just don't down sign the contract and then your homeboys wondering why you down why looking crazy purse. and all yeah. type of shit. Like yeah. no, it ain't true, but they like what this man yeah. got going on. Like that, that that's shit, why y'all yeah. favorite artists just got you know they walk around here wear these purses on and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> how you feel about that? I always ask my like people like if they paid you ten million dollars would you wear a dress or paint your nails? I can't do Bruh, it. I, said, I yeah. got too much integrity. You mm. gotta have more. more dog. <laughs> you gotta have more, my dog. Real talk, cause yeah, bro, bro, you take that money. Damn, like yeah, cause anything ain't gonna just make me jump for no bread, bro. That's a lifetime yeah. of humiliation. I can't do it. Cause really, when you think you got the money. <clears throat> But then you know how social media work and stuff like that too. Like, yeah, you can have the money, you don't need no friends and shit like that. But you in an industry full of fake people that they really don't like you for real like that all the way. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, everything ain't what it really is. They even talked about, for instance, with uh with the whole Diddy situation going on. They were like, Diddy done messed over so many people. 
And like everybody that's they ain't really all the way cool with them like that <laughs> and stuff like that. It's just a crazy industry, yeah. bro. Definitely. So you live in Atlanta now. Yeah. You live in Atlanta as well? No, I no. stay down here. Stay down here. So a lot of people always talk about Atlanta and Orlando. Yeah. High Atlanta. Is Atlanta what it's all chucked up to be? So I'ma say this, bro. I always say this, like, of course, I'm gonna be honest, Atlanta. Well, people somewhat, they be on the right path with it, you know? Because whatever you're doing, Atlanta's just a mecca. I want people to look at it as Orlando could be doing the same thing Atlanta doing, mm -hmm. any other city be doing this. You, got, you can be doing it in your own city. The only thing that you see that's going on is people working together. Now, if you're out of town or whatever and stuff like that, just like down here, a lot of stuff is foreign now. You got people from everywhere. Same thing in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But it's the blueprint. All they doing is, and then, of course, it's, Everywhere, bro. It's problems with everybody got their own internal things going on. Not saying it's all sweet everywhere. But if your face card good and stuff, you go out there, bro, they ain't. You going, you an artist doing whatever you're doing. They got everything going on for every day of the week for whatever you're doing. You can find whatever you into. People be open their arms, bro. Like I said, as long as you do, you build your relationship and be cool with people, bro. People going, you know, because it's like everybody in rotation doing it. But that's the only thing I say. I tell everybody that's always trying to say, mimic that from Atlanta. I mean, Atlanta. Mimic the blueprint, bro. That's really all it takes. Because, like I say, I ain't had no issues like that with running into all different type of people. Like, it's open arms, bro. You know, I met a lot of people, performed a lot of different little places, met more people. And it worked for me, in a sense. And it, like I say, it worked for anybody else. If you a solid third person or you got your fake card good and you do good bending with people, it's about your, your energy, what you going to give. If you if you go out there and you just have a certain type of mentality you leave at home with and leave with that same mentality up there, you're going to burn yourself short. They ain't going to open their arms to you. For real. Yeah, facts. So y'all being two fellas, what are the tough conversations look like? How could y'all stay? How could y'all have a tough conversation and still be cool at the end of the day? Because a lot of guys, they don't know how to talk to one another. They don't know how to come together to create one common goal. So what is a tough conversation? How y'all keep each other on track? Or how y'all tell each other, like, hey, bro, you slacking. Like, you need time up. Like, what does that look like? I mean, really, it's just like we look at each other's work ethics. I mean, we hold each other accountable with everything. We just look at each other, you know, worth ethics, the energy, um, hold each other accountable. I mean, it's really self-explanatory with us, man. We just, you ever just met somebody, I just, everything just clicked. Mm. It just, we, we been cool since we was jit, so it's just like, <laughs> ain't nothing. Yeah, we, <laughs> we have a disagreement. We like, you know, we just understand, bro, like, we work our way back to what we was trying to work to. Yeah. At the moment, we be like, man, like, or like, say when the studio song, bro, come on, let boom, boom. But we understand we got to do. Like, all right, come on. Like, it ain't really too tough like that. Like I say, when you familiar, but like I say, you can be familiar with somebody all your life now, that stuff, and they just go the other way. Just purposely just be like, all right, bro, it's, you know. And you see, you don't see them the same. You see them just because they pull the stunt like that. You know, but we ain't really had no issues like that. We both yeah. been tag teaming, you know, some WWE shit. You know, for real, like we ain't yeah. we ain't got no problems, bro. Yeah, we out here like the hardest. We know boys, we man. we, we know we Jeff take Hardy. the win, bro. We so, know what it take to win, bro. We trying to win. So, like even if in a situation like when I had my little situation going on and stuff like that, I'm the type of person that all want to include my people. So when I had the demo thing going on, that was just me by myself. Like, that was just me and what I had going on and stuff like that. But it's like, I, I always told him, well, I'm like, bro, if I get through the door, everybody, you know, my circle coming with me. Because it's like, I believe in, if you on a level like Dane Dash or something like that, when you look at the Rockefeller situation, and it's like, if one person got a bag and all the other ones, they like, they starving. But you the only one with the bag. But you, you know you could put everybody else in position. But you leave them starving, bro. Eventually they're gonna turn against you. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if I hey, if I fall off with something, my bag getting low or the late, whatever going on, my partner up. So shit, we can figure something out to keep it going, you know? Facts. Gotta keep that bit going, bro. So if the doctor said, Hey, I gotta cut off your arms and your legs, which one are you giving away? <laughs> my arms or my legs? Yeah. 
Like, like arms Wait, as both in up? both? Yeah. Yeah, like, you got to get both your arms or both your legs. That's tough, bro. I'm trying My to arm got to go. I'm trying to think. Bro. You going to give up your arms? So you going to cook with your feet? Yeah. I be whipping it up in the kitchen. <laughs> nah, bro. I'm talking about from this part. Yeah. This part. Yeah, I can't. I can't even bring I'm that. I'm getting the kitchen with the nub, just whipping it out. I don't care. I'm, I gotta walk around, man. <laughs> I gotta walk around. You can use a wheelchair though. I gotta walk around. Yeah, um, these arms got to go. Y'all yeah. gonna be it'll seeing be me doing bit. tutorials on YouTube, cooking up in the kitchen with my feet. You gonna get a bag? I'm it's telling you, you all right. Man, right. bro. Cause nah, it's possible, bro. I say that not no no fit like that, you know. Cause people got their own situation yeah. going on, but you see stuff like that popping now. Was well, yeah, I see it? Everybody <laughs> popping, bro. It ain't just because you healthy got both arms, bro. Everybody is popping. You see social media showing it, bro. Yeah. Bring a twenty versus one, boy. With I be on that bit with the nubs, bro. Play with me. I'm telling you, they could pop them. They could pop everyone on as long as y'all pay me a check, bro. Straighten up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk my way through it as much as I can, bro. I'm uh, telling you. That big going to last longer than 60 seconds, man. Give me five minutes. <laughs> five minutes of fame, bro. Start a podcast, all that and everything, bro. Be booming. Yeah. Hey, at least you got a plan. Yeah. So anything y'all want to leave with the people out there before we get out of here? I mean, make sure y'all go tune into the Underdogs podcast on YouTube. Um, yeah, definitely, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's a cool vibe over there. Um, make sure y'all go check out the Underdogs EP as well. Definitely. We dropped that like a year and a half, two years ago. And also we got to get ready for the return of other Underdogs that's coming out yeah. at first quarter, the top of the year. You know, And we got a couple of music videos coming out too as well, so look forward to that. Yeah, nah, facts, man. You know, everybody out there, man, keep the underdog in you, man. Don't let them count you out. If they count you out, they can't count like they skipped the number. They don't have to start over. Get it right. Selling. Real talk. But, yeah, returning the underdogs on the way is hitting. A whole different type of vibes on the way better than the first one. It's like a deluxe. We ain't even count how much we were going to put on there. We just went to drop it. But shout out to Sight Studio and the film by Billy, too. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So just like he asked me, what does the word underdog mean to y'all? Oh, I got it. Man. I have to do it. Man, the underdog, man, is the one, like I say, man, everybody, everybody don't see the underdog coming. Ain't nobody think about the underdog. The underdog get overlooked. You know, the underdog ain't brought up in the big room conversations, mm -hmm. but they do. They do. You might have the ones knowing that the underdog is there and don't want to let them through the door. But when that underdog pop, you know, that underdog sometimes, sometimes a, a, a let them same ones through, but other than that, they take the ball and run with it though. You know what I mean? You gotta keep going. Underdog on top. Facts. You? Man, underdog, no man. It's that person way in the back of the back that just be working. He keep working to, you know what I'm saying? He give you all his blood, sweat, and tears, no matter what, man. No matter what obstacle come towards him, he keep going. He keep persevering through everything, cause he know. He got a goal to get to, and ain't nobody, no one, nothing's going to stop him. So he just grateful to be in the room with a heavyweight to show the world that he a heavyweight. And when he show the world that he a heavyweight, they going to know, yeah, I'm that underdog, man. And we going to prevail through everything. Believe that. <laughs> Facts. Jesus still ain't beat Gucci. Gucci <laughs> the underdog, you feel <laughs> That's how you feel? Bro, oh, I'm going yeah. to say this because, bro, when that versus happened, Gucci wasn't even never supposed to even beat up, bro, to be honest. You got to think, that's how long ago that murder attempt happened on him? And, like, all them years went by because Jesus was the big dog. Nah, yeah. I'll give it to you. At I was time. rocking with it. But it's like just for them two to get in the room together, you know, years later, it's like he wasn't even supposed <clears> to make it. He wasn't even supposed to. Nah, I got to sit in the room with a guy that I tried to, you know, like, and this man still in the same room. We both at the top, you know. So, Fact. so I look at it like, yeah, it's like if somebody right now try to count you out years later, or ten years later, now you you in the room with me and they, they got to look at you dead in your face like, damn, this man ain't supposed to be here with me. What the hell he doing here? Yeah. And then I, they got to stomach it. You, they got no choice. <laughs> it's gonna be like that soon. <laughs> trying to tell you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But shout out to y'all boys for coming through, man. I yeah. really appreciate y'all. Um, we got more content on the way. Um, Hopefully when y'all draw, y'all come back, come pop it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Y'all already know. So, bro. So, Got man. To. Keep showing love, man. 
Y'all like, comment, subscribe on this video. Y'all go tune in to everything they got going on. I got an episode with my boy, man. So y'all go tap in with that. Y'all like, comment, subscribe. We out. Peace. Hey, what's